I want to say good morning to everyone. Welcome to Reaping the Harvest Community Church. Welcome YouTube watcher and subscribers. God bless you. Thank you for continuing to watch and subscribe uh, as we are in the book of Galatians. <coughs> and we still are in the series of Beware of False Teaching and Self-Righteousness. You know, again on today, how we continue to fight the good fight of faith and stand firm in the Word of God. You know, truth, as we know where it comes from, who it is, is always challenging when we want to live and stand for the truth. Because in, in this series, or even in the Word of God, we're challenged as believers in a fallen world. Uh, the, the darkness that, that's around us, uh, although we're not, no longer in the darkness because we were revived and enlightened by the Spirit of God. When we, when we came into the knowledge of salvation and we accepted God's salvation, God brought us new life. And because we are in new life now, we see things differently. We talk and hear things differently. And our challenge, and sometimes it's even our struggle, is our condition. It's what God has brought us out of. And although we don't, we don't operate in our flesh. We don't live in our flesh any longer because we have truth. Our challenge is, is to remain in the truth. And that's where the Word of God comes in. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, and God didn't leave us comfortless. We already know that we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit that is our guider, our teacher, and our comforter to help us. And, and for that reason, for that reason, for that reason, we have to continue. We have to continue to see that God is on our side. He abides in us, and we in Him, and and we have to understand and knowing that as we continue to mature and grow in the faith, and growing in the faith, that God will keep us where we need to be in Him. Now, that's only if we're faithful and obedient to Him. And uh, just to recap on last week, because just want to expound on it a little bit more. Just want to expound on it a little bit more. Um, so when we see, when we know what we have in the Lord, this is where we need to be in, in how he's conducting us and living a life of righteousness. Do you remember how Paul said this on last week in verses, in chapter 2, verse 20? Because... If we're not understanding this, what what, he, what Christ has actually done in our life, that's where our struggle come in. That's when we question question on what God is actually telling us to do. Look what he said in verse 20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. <coughs> it's not, it's, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and gave himself for me. That's, Paul recognized the life change. Because see, the life that he was living, he thought he was living for God. He thought he was connected to God. He thought he was doing God's work until he encountered God. And God told him, you're going against me. Mm -hmm. Now, when Paul got the, uh, the, the illumination of what he was actually doing wrong, he said, Lord. And when he said, Lord, his life didn't revert back to what he knew. See, this is our challenge. <laughs> and because we in a world, we in a world that still wants to talk to us. Now, the, again, we already know. We see sinners, we know sinners, we know who they are, and we're quick to say, oh, let me help you. We'll present the gospel. We'll share a word. Mm. We'll sow a seed. But when it comes to us within mm. God, mm -hmm. living for mm -hmm. Christ, that's where the enemy comes in. Mm. He's, not, he's not messing with worldly folks. Yeah. They're his. Mm. He wants to come in. Yeah. He wants to come amongst yeah. the body of Christ. Mm. And that's where we are failing. Because that's what we're not recognizing. Mm -hmm. See, if we're not understanding the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that was a reason why Jesus told them to go wait, to be yeah. reduced on power. 
if we're not operating in the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit, we struggle. And we struggle because we're not accepting the truth. We're compromising the truth. This is where false teaching, this is where false teaching and, and self-righteousness come in. <coughs> and it needs to be covered. That deaths need to be covered. And so, 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 so and, and it's our body. Our body needs to be covered. It needs to be covered and knowing that we have a fullness of the Lord. So when we say the fullness of the Lord, how do we get it mixed up that if, if like we talked about on last week in Mark, those that come after me, they shall speak with new tongues. How do we know that we're operating in the fullness of God, in the, in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, in the power of his might? How do we know these things? There's a change to be in every believer that's going forth. The maturity of the faith, the babe in Christ that desires to see men to grow up into maturity and, and eating on solid meat. How do we know these things? Well, one of our standing firm is the truth, is the word of God. And anything that we neglect, if we ask, if we ask for the wisdom, is we seek God first. This is what he tells us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto us. What are all things? The fullness of him, the access to heaven, to do the work, to do the laboring, to reap the harvest. Yeah. So if, if we're compromising that when it comes to truth, then we're not understanding who we are. And, there, and, and that's where the enemy come in and brings the false teaching now. And, and we're susceptible to that because of the flesh. So when we hear truth, how, let me just say this. How can we say amen if we don't believe? How can we say amen and we manipulate? How can we say amen and we compromise? That's not true. If we're saying amen and agree, then we will do that's faith come by hearing. Yeah. And then you act on faith. So if, if this is the challenge, which it is today, like it was back then, we have modern days, Pharisees and Sadducees. They're just not called that. They're called wolves, false teaching. Who is behind this? Satan is behind this. And when we're not operating in the fullness and, and, and displaying that power, of who we are in Christ, we will compromise. And you say, well, Pastor, why do you keep saying compromise and manipulation? If anyone, if anyone in the house of God, brother, sister, pastor, teacher, usher, it doesn't matter, any believer come to you talking any other gospel, that's false teaching. Mm -hmm. And we, if, if we should be able to discern and know when we're not hearing truth. We're, we're getting caught up. We're getting sidetracked in our emotion. If somebody expressed to us um, uh, uh, um, not understanding the love of Christ and abiding in that love, because what we do, we let our guards down and we trust. We should do that when it comes to another fellow brother or sister. Only if truth and love is being displayed in Christ. So we need wisdom. We need discernment. And we need to test the spirit. Yeah. That's not judging. This is what we've been charged to do as believers. How can we remain jointly and fitted together if there's compromising and manipulation? It's not going to happen. Yeah. Because now the enemy has come in. He comes in. That's being a thief. Because now he's stealing. Mm -hmm. What does the death part come in? That's separation. Because judgment comes. To destroy, now it's disrupted. You have cliques now within the house. Within the church, you have cliques. That's where gossiping and murmuring come in. So when we're not careful... <laughs> And when we're not doing rebuke in the proper context, because there was a rebuke in chapter 2, and it's going into chapter 3. So if we're not understanding it and when the context to use, that's why we just can't keep saying, I rebuke you, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. What are you rebuking? Mm -hmm. 
If you're not understanding, why we use that word so loosely? Rebuke is correction, but it also mm -hmm. brings a reverential mm -hmm. fear of who God is in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have God, and you openly rebuke someone, and they, they, they come against you, they're not of Christ. Because rebuke is love correction. It's not to bash or, turn away or dismiss someone. So these are the things that, when I'm talking about the teaching, when I'm talking about the, the, the mm -hmm. false teaching and the, the self-righteousness, this is not coming against the body of Christ. It's coming against the work of the kingdom of darkness, Satan himself. Mm -hmm. You don't think we're going to be challenged when we stand for the truth? Of course we are. Why are we fearing one that's already headed to the lake of fire? You should be fearing the one that can destroy both. Yeah. So if, if these are the things that we're challenging with, why are we still doing it? When we attend, when we sit under sound teaching, sound doctrine, to reprove, to build up, to empower, why are we still acting like we don't know? Because we, we are letting we are letting the enemy deceive us when it comes to words. I didn't say the living word. I said words. He's not the living word. Yeah. So what do you think he's going to attack you with? He's going to give you part truth. God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, that's whole. Yeah. It's whole truth. God's word is not going to return to him void. What he has spoken, it does. Yeah. What Satan does, his word, it, that's to destroy. That brings misery, pain, heartache, heartbroken. Yeah. Wait, uh, God mend hearts. He loves, he keeps, he makes whole. So why are we still listening to false teaching? Why are we still allowing people to say things when we, we esteem we esteem them as if they're God. We do not esteem them as if they're one with God. And what I mean by that is we put them where God needs to be in our life. This is what I'm saying. So as we continue in the book of Galatians in chapter 3, and, and just recall now, remember, this is going on into an open rebuke as we read verses 1. O Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly betrayed among you as crucified. This I only want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit of did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having been in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh, having suffered many things in vain, if indeed, if indeed I, it was in vain? All Paul is saying here, if you can recall, when you, we turn back to Galatians 1, if we turn back to Galatians 1, this is what he said in 6 in verses 6 and 7 in Galatians 1. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who call you in the grace of God to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. See, that comes by the way of another human being portraying to be Christ. Now, we found out in verse 2 what it was about. There were some Judaizers that came from Jerusalem to Galatia. And what they did, they say, in order for these Gentiles to be fully saved, they have to be circumcised. That's false teaching. Christ did not come. His message was not to be circumcised. His message was to be rid of sin, to conquer sin, death, hell, and the grave. That's what he did. The circumcision now is the heart. Yeah. We don't have to perform an operation or a duty to cut. That's what the Word of God does. The circumcision of the heart, the heart change. Yeah. So if God resides in the heart and the heart has changed, that's where it is. 
It's in our heart. What the what <clears throat> out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. How does it penetrate the heart? It's through the ears, it's through the eyes, it's through the mind. So if we're not renewing our mind, if we're not hearing the word by faith, if we're not seeing Jesus the Christ the Messiah, if we're not speaking what he has spoken, we're being deceived by the enemy. You say, well, why do you say that? If it's not true that we can walk away in peace and, and, and remain in peace now, and then having a cultivation of both parties, whatever the conversation is in the Lord, if it's not strengthened, we've walked away with false teaching. Well, well, well Pat, that's just too hard. What am I supposed to say if I'm in a relationship with a friend? If I'm in a relationship with other brothers and sisters? Uh, we should be talking about the Word of God. We're in a new life. All that foolish talking that we was doing, all of us as believers should be sick and tired of it. That's not who we are. Why do we keep saying that? Why do we keep entertaining words that's not of life? Why? Because we have not given the Lord everything. We're still holding on to that one little thing. I, me. We're being selfish. Did you not? I didn't say we wasn't saved. He came and took residence. And when he came and took residence in our life, in our heart, we was enlightened about our sin. So now we have been enlightened about our sin and we're no longer sinners, but children, sons and daughters of the Lord. Our Father, Heavenly Father, through the Son, has given us an helper that's just like them. Yeah. Not saying anything different than them. So why are we not gravitating to this? Are we being foolish? Are we being foolish to the point to where we're hearing a different gospel that we say, wait a minute, did I really hear? In essence, that's what is being portrayed here. And that is what's being portrayed today. Yeah. See, if broad is the way of destruction and narrow is the way and few be that find it, in our mind, because of our vocabulary and the verbiage that we've used, we think when we hear certain things, that's a literal statement. God, okay, when God is talking, God talk past, present, future. Even though it haven't happened yet, it's going to happen. Yeah. Because God has spoken. Mm. And because God has spoken it, it's not going to change. God is not changing, but he changed those who are connected with him. Mm. And that's where we are missing it at. If we want to cultivate a God-spirit-filled life, we have got to do that with the Lord Jesus Christ first. Because mm -hmm. if we do that first, then we are not going to entertain any other words but the gospel, the word of God. Mm -hmm. This is what we have been charged to do. We're not alone in this. We have a helper. We even have an advocate on our behalf in heaven right now. Yeah. But what are we doing? We're still being challenged in a way where I, I just don't see nothing wrong with just hanging out. What in the world hanging out means? So if if we if we're gonna hang out or I'm gonna have a girls' night out, what does that actually mean? Or I'm, I'm gonna be with the fellas. What does that mean? What are we actually doing? See, that's a question. But if I go in and, ex and expound on a little bit more, we'll find out. We're not having godly conversations. We're having everything else but godly conversation. What we'll do is we'll talk about it and then we'll say, well, the Lord knows. That's not the word of God. <clears throat> well, you act like we just can't even talk. I didn't say that. The more that we know the Word of God, the more the Word of God is going to come out of our mouth. 
Because why? It's renewing our mind. It's settling in our heart to speak it. But if we're, if we're still entertaining foolish talking, Paul called it a different gospel. See, we talk about the gospel. If he's anti-God, anti-Christ, don't you know the devil has word which is anti-gospel? But we're susceptible to that. Why? Because that was once our condition. Mm -hmm. Why are we still listening to condition words and not listen in the position that we're in in Christ, his word? Why are we still entertaining that? See, in our flesh, our flesh is the one like, well, who can live? What can we do? Well, wait a minute. How can we say that when we say, when Jesus said, I came that you may have life, and not just to have life, but have it more abundantly. See, in our condition, in our fleshly mind, when we hear that, and we're not thinking spiritually, well, I still can do some things. I can still live worldly, but, but now I'm a Christian now. That's a different gospel. That's not what he said. If, if he's abiding in us, and we have a work to do, because we have a work to do, the, we, the fields are white to harvest. It's reaping time. If there's reaping time, and he said laborers, not laborer, we have work to do. Now, if we have work to do, and this is what we're doing, Guess what we're going to be able to know and hear? Remember Nehemiah, Sambal, and Tobiah wanted to stop him? Using words. Yeah. But Nehemiah had a mind to work for what? What God had said. Yeah. And then the people, because he was obedient, the people had a mind to work. There was unity there. But he still had an obligation under the king. So, we read these things in the Bible. We say, oh, how great God is. Oh, that's awesome. But when it comes to us, we compromise. Or we manipulate. Where is that coming from? That's the enemy. And we go on thinking we're okay. Well, wait a minute. Don't you know that's when your works are burned? If you would continue to do that and remain in the state, when we are in and serving the Lord day by day. God forgive us of our sin. But the works. God cannot. He can't recount on that. Mm -hmm. If you did not fulfill that duty that day. That's where it's going to be brought up. In the judgment. He's forgiven the sin now. Yeah. But you're laboring. How do you receive pay? You work. Mm -hmm. How can we all of a sudden. Because we get excited. And this is what I'm saying about the condition. We get excited. All this murmuring and complaining and stealing and robbing that we are around with people that we work with. When we're not careful, we'll talk about, we'll do the same thing. But soon, this is what we'll say. We won't see it as a blessing. Oh, it's payday. A whole demeanor change. Well, wait a minute. Payday came when he saved you. Rewarding you will be the faithfulness in that day when you stand before him. We're not excited about that. Oh, someday, someday payday. Wait a minute. If we have our eagerness to please the Lord and we want to obey and be faithful to him, every day should be excited. You know why? Because that means that you're in the field harvesting. But we don't look at it that way because we have been listening to a different gospel. And this is where the challenge where we are. If we're not paying attention to the word, we're going to be susceptible to a different word. Mm -hmm. And he called it foolishness. Who hath bewitched you? Why are you turning? Why are you turning away from the gospel? That you heard and did receive. Why? That was a question. But look what he said in verse 2. This only I want to learn from you. 
Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? That's a question because the Judaizers was teaching circumcision. Remember, this was the problem. This is where Lord appeared away from the Gentile brethren and, and Barnabas got caught up in it. This is what we talked about on last week. They was trying to put law on the gospel. That's false teaching. And as he goes on to say in verse 3, Are you so foolish, having been in the Spirit, are now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? He's reminding them, how can you have received the gospel? God has taken residence in your life. And the Spirit of the Lord is, has been revealing to you that your ears now is turning away. We've been warned. I say we, I say we was here when the church started. We have people that have itching ears. Mm -hmm. But they're not of Christ. Mm -hmm. We have people that doubt and they're not of Christ. Now, our challenge as believers, if we doubt, then our faith is going to waver. Yeah. The enemy is messing with us. How can you doubt unless you have heard untruth? That's false teaching. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come. It's not going to come just in mere conversation. It's from within. It's from within. If our Lord, Savior, and Master had to deal with this, you think he just gonna, we're going to escape this? When he told us we're going to enter into his suffering? See, the flesh don't want to feel pain. The flesh don't want to suffer. But now in your spirit, God has prepared you to go through that. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthen us. Now, we quote that, but do we do it? That's a question. In verse 4, having you, Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? This is what he's talking about. If the gospel is free, which it is, you heard it and received it. Now, while all of a sudden it's like a burden, or you have to add to that. Well, wait a minute. If the law or the commandments was not in your hearing when the gospel was presented, why do we have to do that? As condition or unbelief that we have, the flesh want to cause us to think we're on top, we're number one, we're selfish, it's all about us. That's what we don't pay attention to. Those words that just came out of my mouth, who said them? Satan, I'm going to extend above the most high. So, these are the things. It's the subtility of the words. I don't want to put an emphasis on how I just expressed this. I'm going to send myself above the most high. He don't come that way. He's going to come in a subtle way, a cunning way, to make you believe that is true. Remember, he told us, surely you won't die. See, we'll do this. He, did, he said, surely you won't die. Well, when we do it that way, do you know that actually caused us to be more susceptible of believing his words? He talked just like us. He don't come and say, now, you know now, I'm the devil. And I'm going to tell you what I can do. He don't do that. If he can appear as an angel of light and minister an angel of light, He's going to talk just like you. The discernment is if we have the word of truth yeah. in us, which we do, why are we entertaining false teaching? That's a question. Are we hearers and not doers? Are we operating in the faith that we hear the word? Or are we operating in words we just hear? You see the difference between the two? Word, faithful word, God word, that's power. Mm -hmm. Same words is empty, it's powerless. Yeah. 
Now, if we're more than conquerors in Christ, which we are, why are we lowering our standards as believers and coming down? Jesus is the one that came down to go up. Mm -hmm. He raised you up and going to raise us up. So we don't go down. We're going up. Mm -hmm. So, again, when we hear this, why are we not openly rebuking this? Because as I am speaking this, it's an open rebuke. Who is it for? Those that are not listening. Are we all susceptible to it? Amen. That's why it has to be in us to desire the sincerity and the sincerity of Christ. He's the one. He's the source. Mm -hmm. He is advocating. He is interceding on our behalf. Mm -hmm. That advocate that I'm talking about, the very person that you're listening to is accusing you. It's not a doubt in my mind if we could actually see what actually take place in hell, heaven and see him accusing you. Mm -hmm. We still won't leave it to the Lord. Well, I'll take care of this myself. Okay, let's see how much you're going to do without him. You're going to be deceived. See, that's how he draw his power. He tempt you and get you to do what you want. He, he gets you to do what he wants you to do. And then he'll turn around and go tempt. Hmm. But let me tell you the difference between a child of God and a child of Satan. They can't go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. They can't be restored or renewed. Hmm. So why are we acting like we're children of Satan? When we're children of the living God now, what in the world is going on? Are we that naive spiritually? Are we that ignorant to the word? Because ignorant is just a lack of knowledge of the faith. If you're hearing the word of God and you are leaning and understanding and living the word of God, you will not be deceived. It's impossible because the spirit is going to alert you. The spirit is going to tell you what to say. Mm -hmm. These are not your words. There's two. Either you talking Satan talk or you talking God talk. You don't have a language or a speech. Why are we being so naive when it comes to spiritual things? They're both operating in the spirit. He is not going to reveal himself until the end. Mm -hmm. But guess what? God has brought revelation and illumination to you now. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ came. Yeah. But we're still acting ignorant when it comes to that. And I'm not saying that to call you that. But when you're not abiding in, what are you, that's ignorant. When you're hearing it. You hear it not to accept it because you're allowing your flesh to say, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I know, but, but I know better. You're not saying that outwardly, but you're saying it inwardly. Who do you think you're saying it to? Mm -hmm. You're saying it to the Lord. And then when you act out against him, oh, pray for me. I just messed up. Well, wait a minute. You had a warning. You had a warning. And those of us that actually see it will tell you, oh, wait a minute, I'm caught. pump the brakes, caution, what's really going on here? How did you get to this conversation? What are you really listening to? Well, it's like this. I just don't see nothing wrong with it. That's justifying. If we have the liberty, we're going to touch on this, the liberty and the freedom of, of in Christ to live, which we do. Why are we not living? If he has went to prepare a place for us, shouldn't that's where our mind and heart be? As we're passing through now, this is temporal for us. Heaven is everlasting. So who have bewitched you? Who have bewitched us? That we should hear a different gospel. Who? Are we abiding in the word of God? Are we living by faith when we hear the word of God? 
Galatians chapter 4, verse 11 and 20. Galatians chapter 4, verses 11 and 20. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored in vain. And all Paul is saying is this. When false teaching come in, fear come in. Fear come in when we hear false teaching. Why? Because now we, we question, are, is, are they really telling me the truth? Are they really teaching me? Now you're questioning God. Wait a minute. If God were to sharpen to his sword and it cuts the bone and marrow, why are we questioning his word? When he already said his word don't return void. You see how subtle that comes in? It comes in subtly. Mm -hmm. Kind, crafty. Only when we're not paying attention. When we're not paying attention. That's why you should not just hear anything. If I'm hearing the word of God in a conversation, I should be able to go back and look that up and see, is, is that true? Verse 20. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubt about you. Why is Paul saying this? Because they are listening to false teaching. That's what they're doing. And it's the same church. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 5, verse 12. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. Now, we already know that he has stated, if any man preach anything of the gospel, let him be a curse. Don't listen to that. If they're not preaching the gospel. See, preaching is not just us coming together. And, and, and it, this is one of the, the, the exercises or one of the exhortation that we do. If we're not preaching while we're on the outside, we're susceptible because our guard's down now. See, we come in, and this is our makeup. We'll come in. Oh, I'm going to church. I got to get ready for church. We get ready for church. I'm like, I got to hear a word. I got to hear a word. I got to hear a word. Oh, oh, that was a good word. That, that, that's empowered me. Now I got my week set. I, I, I'm ready. As soon as we get out of church, um, I think I'm just going to go hang out. Wait a minute. How can we say in that moment, I'm ready, I'm eager, and then we switch off. Oh, see, now, now here, let me be myself now. That's the cunningness. That's the subtlety, the verbiage that we're not catching. Well, Pastor, what are you saying? We just need to be talking about God all the time? Amen, yes. Mm -hmm. You know why? That's our new life. Mm -hmm. what, else are we need to, what else do we need to be talking about? We don't even have a conversation about how it's going to be once we're all there. We're so ignorant that we don't even extend the right hand of fellowship when God is doing something in someone else's life. Mm. As if we just going, oh, this is my part right here. And, and that's your part right there. When we all going to cast our crown. We all going to kneel and bow before him and say, worthy, worthy is the Lord. You think once we do that, we're going to go back to business as usual? Mm. That's the cunningness of the enemy. He wants to divide the church. Yes. And because of that reason, we are listening foolishly. Foolishness. We're being bewitched. And we want to call ourselves Christians. Really? See, truth sets you free. Yeah. Truth makes you free. But why do we want to compromise it with a lie? Why we want to manipulate it on unbelief? If the word of God is what it said is, and we say we believe it, live it for the love of God. Live it. And quit being bewitched. Quit being foolish. How did this all start? He created it. And in the end, he restored it. God did not change himself. He changed mankind. Mm -hmm. He changed his creation. Why? Because sin entered in. 
Now he had to deal with sin. His creation didn't change. You know how I know that and how he changed it? He changed it by the way of his righteousness, his holiness. We're going to have a new heaven and a new earth, right? Mm -hmm. This one's passing away. Why? Sin. Yeah. Sin cannot reside in his sight. Mm -hmm. He didn't say all of a sudden there's not going to be no heaven, no earth. God didn't say that. He said new. Now guess what we're the benefactors of? Yeah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things, this world, pass away. Behold, I am God. Mm -hmm. All things become new. Why are we still operating in a conditioned life when we have a position to live a righteous life in Christ? Mm -hmm. What is really going on? We're listening to false teaching. And that's where the breakdown is. And when you listen to false teaching, you will be self-righteous. That's not of God. That's not of Him. So, as we continue this walk of faith, and the gospel itself now, the gospel the gospel has come to us. Mm -hmm. We have received the gospel. And God, God, all three now, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit resides right here mm -hmm. in our heart. Spiritually. And because of that, he don't have to leave heaven but he brought us heaven. Oh my God. He brought us to heaven. If God is bringing us to heaven, should we be talking and living heavenly? Transitioning into where we're going to be everlasting? And not entertain, not entertaining foolishness, not entertaining and being susceptible of being bewitched? Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, oh no, Philippians chapter 3, verse 2, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, chapter 3, I'm sorry, verse 2. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mani manipulation. Now, everything that I just spoke about or just said is the very thing. Do you know the works? It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Do you know the work of Satan is like a dog? Mm. So when it comes to the evil content of what he does, look at all the things that we know that is naive. Or ravaging. Why would he mention wolves? Why would he mention snake? Why would he mention dog? Why would he mention that? Because the aggression and what the form now they weren't like that before. But these are the the the, the analogies that God uses of how he works. Dragon, serpent. Why do you think he says that? Mm. Now God created them mm -hmm. but he's anti so he's going to take the very things that <clears throat> the, the, the what was a good intention of they should have he turned that Satan so turned that he's coming to eat sheep that's what a wolf do mm -hmm. an adult a dog can throw up and then turn around and lick it up mm -hmm. lick his own vomit this is how God describes some people in Revelation. So, how is it that we're still susceptible to this language? Because we're not operating in the power and the fullness of God. We only, we're trying to compromise and be manipulated by the work of darkness. Mm -hmm. Who are susceptible? All of us. Are capable of doing it 
But that's when we, within ourselves, have to make a stand. Lord, is this of you? We don't examine our conversation. Because we literally let our guard down. Oh, that's my sister. Oh, that's my brother. And then we'll start talking about any and everything. How's God in the conversation? Mm -hmm. He's not. That's foolish talking. See, I know it don't sound right. I know our flesh is cringing right now. Wait a minute. Because your flesh wants to sin. Come on, saints. Your flesh wants to sin. Mm -hmm. God has given you power. We just read it. For I am crucified with Christ. Yet now I no longer live, but Christ lived within me. So the things that I say now, I'm going to say what he has said. I'm going to say what he told me to say. Mm -hmm. How is it? And we read this scripture when Jesus warned them and said, don't worry about what you're going to say in an hour. I'll give you the words to say. We'll put some emphasis on it too. But now, as we hear it today, well, that's in that time and that hour that you need. Oh, I hold up. Mm -hmm. That's right now. We should be doing that right now. When you go out to minister, when you go out to witness, do you come up with your words? Do you present your gospel or do you present Christ's gospel? That's even a breakdown in that. We get instruction now. This is what you're watching. We'll script it and we'll do it routinely as if every house is going to be the same. Be cordial now. Go up, smile. Uh, that's not the instruction that God told us to do. When he go, when he told us to go and share the gospel, when we're sharing the gospel, we're not sharing the gospel based on how we should do it. We are being led and operated by the Holy Spirit to do the work of the Lord. We cannot do the work of the Lord if the Holy Spirit is not leading us to yeah. do it. If the Holy Spirit is not operating in us to speak it. Right. If the Holy Spirit is not helping us to live it. Mm. If the Holy Spirit is not comforting us when we're going through it. That's his work. But if we're not abiding in the work of the Lord, we're grieving and quenching him. And then we think the Lord is pleased. How in the world is your father? How in the world is your, your father pleased when you disobey him? He's not pleased with that. Look at the analogy that God used. If a kid asks an earthly father for a gift, does he give him a stone? If your heavenly father knows, you don't think he's eager and ready to please you, to give you what you ask of him? We're not asking, we're not asking for empowerment. We're not asking for the, the fullness of the Lord. We're not seeking him. You know when we seek the Lord? When we sin and in trouble. When everything all right, well, the Lord's blessed me. <laughs> we'll say, oh, yeah, the Lord, he's, he's blessed me. Uh, you know, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, you too blessed to be stressed? Okay, if you're saying you're too blessed to be stressed, you do not understand suffering. That's false teaching. Because I don't know nobody saying I'm not stressed in, in, in persecution. See, guess what? Guess when you say I am blessed? When I'm going through my affliction. When I'm going through my trials. When I'm going through my suffering. I'm blessed. You know why? Because thou art with me. Mm. Huh? But see, oh Lord, help me. Heal me, Lord. That's what we say. But well, wait a minute. By his strife, we are healed. So when you're going through your afflictions and your trial, we are to count it all joy. All right. That's what we say. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah. Not when I have what I think that the world doesn't offer. I'm too blessed. I'm blessed to be straight. Foolishness. You being bewitched. Mm. We want to put cliches on the word of God. You, there's no standard. It's his word and his word alone. Truth. Yeah. But what do we do? We make it about ourselves. And then we attach God to it. Mm. And he's nowhere in it. 
Nowhere. But I will tell you what he's doing. He's prodding. Yeah. He's prodding. Hey, 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 hey. Not that way. Keep on the path now. Keep on the path. Well, Lord, you know, why can't I do this? If our steps are ordered, and we say we believe it, if our steps are ordered, and we say we believe it, are you following those steps? If you follow those steps, guess what? If we're making ourselves available for the Lord, and we're all in, that's when your light shines. Because now you're making yourself available for the light to shine through you. Mm -hmm. When the light shines through you, men will see it and give God praise. Oh, not my. you, not mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Now you tell me, you ask yourself, you ask yourself, are you doing that? Or are you being bewitched? Are you listening to manipulation? false teaching because the gospel now if you have received the gospel of Jesus Christ and your life has changed sin does not reside here anymore because he did not die in vain right he didn't die partly on the ground or on the grave or on the cross. It was whole. God understands every single thing that we go through. He even understands the manipulation and the false teaching that we're going through. We have been engrafted to remain in him. And not to entertain or listening to anything else. Anything else. Let me give you one. We want to put emphasis on Mary, birth of Jesus. We do not pay now one single sense of belief of what Mary actually said. She didn't walk away special. She didn't walk away, I'm the woman that's carrying Jesus. She didn't walk away that way. She pondered in her heart of what God had said to her. Because she, how is this going to happen? So the angel of the Lord talked to her. Now Joseph, being a righteous man, had mind to dismiss her. Because they was already engaged. But the Lord talked to him. Now, wait a minute. That's in the learning process there for us. That's Old Testament. It's just recorded in the New Testament. They was Old Testament saints. When the Lord talked to Joseph, Joseph did not separate himself. He joined himself with her and didn't touch her until after. That's the power of God. And all of a sudden, because our flesh want to be connected, oh, I think I better do this. Oh, I think I better do that. We succumb to it. Those are feelings. That's not your spirit. And your spirit should be able to suppress your feelings. But we're not operating in the fullness of the Lord. We're going by our flesh. God has given us life abundantly. And in that abundant life, he Take care of you in every aspect of your life. Even in relationships. Even in relationships. God will put, supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. It's in his word. Why are we seeking things that's not of God? When he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Why are we seeking anything else? You know why? Because we haven't been taught. We haven't lived it. So it's easy for us to go with the masses. 
it's easy for us to say, it's okay. No, it's not. You're going against what he has told us to do. I can be the sharpest, the handsomest, and can speak so fluently, but if I'm not living it, it's false. It's false. If I have to say, I want to get to know you, do you know what the Lord is telling me? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek him first. If my relationship is not intimate with the Lord, how can I connect myself with somebody else? It's impossible. Trouble. Trouble. Because I'm being set up. I'm being set up for the enemy to come in to disrupt my life. He can't take away salvation. But boy, he can sure take you through some things you don't want to go through. When we're talking about the very thing that's happening right here, it is by faith that you heard the word of God. It is by faith you received him. It is by faith you live. If the just shall live by faith, and we're going to touch on this in just a second. If the just shall live by faith, how do the just live? By hearing the word of God. That's faithfulness. But if we're going outside of that, that's faithless. Mm -hmm. We're not paying attention to the words. We have got to stay in tune with the word and not listen to words. You see the difference between the two? Words is foolishness. Mm -hmm. Word is living. He's a living word, not words. Mm. Saying words, that's foolishness. But when, we, when we're not taught that way, we try to figure things out by ourselves. Mm. And that's when the sheep wander. That's when the sheep try to lead a flock. And if the shepherd is Pre preaching and teaching words uh, and not the word. Right, right. That's what caused them to leave. My sheep hear my voice. If you're questioning what God has said to the pastor, you're not listening. The enemy's messing with you. You're trying to see the grass green on the other side. Lot. Mm. Don't do it. Stay within those boundaries. If you stay within the boundaries, you're safe. You're safe. I am talking about our life. This is our life in Christ. And if we're listening to anything else, that is the devil. I didn't say the person was the devil. That's devil trying to get to them to get to you. How did he get to Adam? He went through Eve. Because he heard a word weaker. And women are gullible to his foolishness. And they listen to this stuff. And when they listen to it, what do you think they're going to take it back to? Who they hang around with? Who they talk with? Who they trying to connect themselves with? Now, does that make the women just the scum of the earth? No. Because God fearfully and wonderfully made them. The importance of relationship. The, report, the importance of listening. Because when he's talking about the brother in this church, he wasn't just talking about the men. Don't you know the foolishness with disrupt families? Don't you know the foolishness, these foolish words will interrupt marriages? So if we're going to keep listening to all this foolishness, who have bewitched us? Yeah. Who have caused us to turn away from the faith? That is the enemy. Because what our emotion and our flesh say, well, she's this, well, he's that. I just want you to show me 
to where the Bible says, well, he's this, well, she's that, is not here. Why are we talking that way? Why can't we just go to the Lord? Lord, is this you? Because Lord, if this say you, I don't want no parts of it. So Lord, I'm going to need your help. Separate this right now. Because see, now we're seeking him. We're seeking him for wisdom to live by faith. But if we're doing anything else other than that, the enemy's messing with us. You see the seriousness and the severity of false teaching and self-righteousness? That comes by the way of those of us engrafted in the body of Christ. Because we're not listening to the voice. Mm -hmm. We're listening to another voice. If my sheep know my voice, when you hear the word of God, and when the word of God is in your conversation, for the love of God, please, 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 I'm imploring and begging, please listen. Just go back to him. If you still waver with that, just go back to him and then look it up and then read it. Lord, I need wisdom right here. I'm saying with everything, this is our life. I tell you all the time, go back. Why do you think, why do you think the Lord helped me to give you scriptures? Go back and read these scriptures yourself. You know why? Because he wants to commune with you. It's just not in this setting. This to empower you to keep the faith and keep going. But that equipment, that's for you to go back to and look at. That's ammunition for you. Because mm. when the ammunition comes, now you can explode. You know why? Thus says the Lord. He is my strength. He is my source. He is my deliverer. My relationship is strong in the Lord and the power of his might. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Start talking that talk. People are going to run from you, but they're not running. It's the demonic force that's running. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now, if they truly a brother or sister, they're going to say, wait a minute, you know what? That's too familiar to me. I need to go back. And I need to look at this. What do you think God was going to do that? Now God can bless. Now the abundant life can go forth. We should be, this should be a joyous occasion. And I was saying, I wonder. Well, this is how we talk. Somebody will profess to be a Christian. And they'll go wayward. Or they may take their life. Well, I wonder if they was a Christian. What did you do with this person while they was living? Did you give them the words of life? Or did you just talk words? These are the things that we have to examine ourselves about. What's really coming out of our heart? Is it the word of God or words of Satan? We so gullible. We think the words that we say that's outside of God is God's word. Foolishness! Because after we say it, now Lord, what's that you? You don't go back and tell that person that, but you'll say, Lord, I hope I said If the word of God is in us, is it's biting in our heart now, it should flow out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. Out of your belly it should flow rivers of living water. The word is what? Water. It flows. We should be eating because it's the bread of life. So what are we really doing? I truly think God has given us enough to chew on. Mm. And we don't need to go any farther. Today, if you have heard God's voice, heart not your heart. Those out there that are listening and watching, if you have not accepted Christ, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Today is the day to receive him as your Lord and Savior. It's, it's just as easy as you're listening and as you're speaking. If you confess with your mouth that you're a sinner, and you believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, God will save you. And when I tell you, if you have done this, to go to a Bible-believing church, pray to God that he will lead you to a God-believing church so you can become a, equipped and a disciple to fight the good fight of faith and work in the kingdom in God's vineyard. God bless you. God keep you. Father.